Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump had absolutely no interest in politics, no interest in ever working in government, and then Ivanka's father ran for president. And suddenly, Jared Kushner, who knew absolutely nothing about any kind of political campaign, never mind the most complex of all, a presidential campaign, was right there in the thick of the presidential campaign. Why was he there? If he wanted to help his father-in-law's campaign, why didn't, he, why didn't he help him find someone to hire who actually knew something about presidential campaigns? Why do it yourself when you can afford to hire an expert who can do it better than you can? Donald Trump never had anyone in his family piloting his airplanes and helicopters. He hired professionals for that. And then, after coming in second in the vote count, but first in the Electoral College, the Trump family suddenly found themselves in transition. And Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump decided to give up their comfortable lives in Manhattan, uproot their children, and move to Washington to work in the White House. Prior to election night, when they were no doubt as surprised as the rest of us at the outcome of the Electoral College, neither one of them had ever given any thought of ever going to work in a government building of any kind. Why would Jared Kushner do that? Why would Ivanka Trump move the kids to Washington, take an office in the White House? My first guess about why they were doing that might be true, but it's not the whole story. The whole story includes something I did not suspect. I did not suspect that Jared Kushner craved power in the White House and was going to seize control of an impossibly large portfolio of interests, but he did. My first guess was, sim was simpler. It was simply that the kids were worried about the old man. The kids have been watching, especially over recent years, a decline in Donald Trump's executive function. Neurologists will tell you that it happens to most people his age, usually in ways that are barely perceptible. Forgetting the keys, forgetting names, sometimes in ways that are glaring. What neurologists call executive function includes basic mental processes like attention control, cognitive inhibition, working memory, cognitive flexibility. A decline in executive function is the beginning of the process that eventually leads you to take the car keys away from dad. Having personally watched Donald Trump become increasingly incoherent over the last several years, my first assumption was the kids were going to Washington because they knew dad is utterly incoherent much of the time and forgetful and inattentive. And so in the White House, someone he trusts would have to be able to whisper in his ear to remind him of what he said yesterday and what he should say now or remind him why he's having this meeting and to always be available to translate the president's incoherence to people in the White House and the cabinet. In effect, the president's translator. That's, that's the job I thought Jared Kushner was going to have. That's an intimate job. A trusted family member makes sense for that job. It had to be Jared instead of Donald Jr. or Eric Trump because, as some close observers of the president have reported, Donald Trump thinks his son-in-law is smarter than his sons. Given what we now know about Jared Kushner, that may, that may be one of Donald Trump's many misjudgments. As far as we know, Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump never suggested setting up a communication channel direct to Moscow that the Trump transition team could use at the Russian embassy in Washington. That was Jared's idea. In the recorded history of presidential transitions, no one has ever made a stupider suggestion than that. And that was Jared's idea. It was Donald Trump Jr.'s idea to invite Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort to a very important meeting that he had scheduled during the campaign, which the email traffic about the meeting identified as Russia, Clinton, private, and confidential. The New York Times first reported that meeting three weeks ago on July 8th. Last night, The Washington Post reported that President Donald Trump personally dictated the words of Donald Trump Jr.'s first public statement about the meeting that he gave to The New York Times when The Times asked him about it. When the news of that meeting was first reported, the president's lawyer said that the president had nothing to do with Donald Trump Jr.'s statement, even though The New York Times then reported that the president was consulted in, dra in the drafting of Donald Trump Jr.'s statement. Today, the White House press secretary said, the president weighed in. 
he certainly didn't dictate, but, you know, he, like I said, he weighed in, offered suggestion like any father would do. Okay, let's, for the moment, put aside whether the president weighed in or dictated every word of the statement and consider this demonstration of the president's failure of neurological executive function when he was speaking in an interview with the Wall Street Journal last week. This is last week. The president said to the Wall Street Journal, there's nobody on the campaign that saw anybody from Russia. We had nothing to do with Russia. Twelve days before that, the president told, before the president told the Wall Street Journal, there's nobody on the campaign that saw anybody from Russia. Twelve days before that, the president said this about his son's meeting during the campaign in Trump Tower with Russians. I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. The same mind that was out there publicly defending Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with Russians, 12 days later says there's nobody on the campaign that saw anybody from Russia. Does the president have any memory at all? of what he said 12 days earlier about the same thing. The country and the news media have grown so accustomed to the president's constant incoherence that it mostly passes now without comment. Prior to the Trump White House, any president being repeatedly, publicly incoherent would be considered a crisis, a profoundly serious crisis, right in the strike zone of the 25th Amendment, which was enacted to remove presidents who were unable to discharge the powers and duties of the office. That amendment was written in anticipation of mental illness, of mental disability, as well, as well as other health disabilities. That amendment was written for presidents who sound like Donald Trump. Now listen to every word that the president said when the Wall Street Journal asked him last week whether he will try to fire Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller. Wall Street Journal. Sessions has recused himself, but is Bob Mueller's job safe? There is speculation. President Trump, no. We're going to see. I mean, I have no comment yet because it's too early, but we'll see. We're going to see. So when asked if Bob Mueller's job is safe, the president's first word is no. Meaning, no, his job is not safe. I might try to fire him. And then the president says, we're going to see. What that means is maybe. He then goes on to say, it's too early, but we'll see, we're going to see. We'll see means, I don't know right now, it's possible. That is a stunning answer about the future of a special prosecutor. It's possible he'll be fired. But what if Donald Trump doesn't even understand the words he's using and what they mean when everyone else uses them? What does we'll see, we're going to see mean to Donald Trump? The most remarkable thing about that incoherent answer is that right in the middle of it, the president says, I have no comment. And then he says, we'll see. We're going to see. Not realizing that that is a comment. The incoherent president gives a very important comment while saying he has no comment and it is largely ignorable by the news media because they have grown accustomed to having an incoherent president. A president for whom words mean nothing. A White House where words mean nothing. And so when the White House today claims that the president weighed in on Donald Trump Jr.'s first public statement about his meeting with Russians during the campaign, the only thing the White House spokesperson will say is that he weighed in, a phrase that has no specificity, no meaning. Did he weigh in on every word? Did weighing in mean he dictated some of the sentences and not all of the sentences? This morning, Matt Lauer asked Republican Senator Lindsey Graham about the possibility that the president dictated the words of Donald Trump Jr.'s first statement about that meeting with Russians. It sounds like the president himself was trying to cover up the truth about that meeting. If that's true, then that was a bad decision by the president, which will make us ask more questions. When you get caught in a lie about one thing, it makes it hard to just say, let the other stuff go. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.